Welcome back to Just Driven. In today's video, we're just gonna give you guys a quick update. As you can see, the charger's up on the lift. We've got the super up on the lift. A lot of things going on. In about two weeks, we're gonna have delivery of our container from Japan. You know, we've mentioned it before. We have a new project we've been collecting parts for in Japan. It has not been easy, but we have been very successful in collecting virtually every part we need to build a new car. I think you guys are gonna absolutely love it. We're taking advantage of the 25 year rule. So that may shed some light on what the next project it's going to be once we get notification the ship has arrived it's going to take about a week to unload the container the car will likely come here with all its parts we're going to do a quick rundown on the car look at it mechanically identify what challenges exist and which ones we're going to address and then we're going to break into the bodywork so we're going to utilize this facility to do the entire construction of that body for that project that's coming soon so stay tuned for that and again that's one of many many builds that we're working on right now. That little Hako, we haven't really driven yet. Adrian did the final assembly for the seats and the center console. I believe all the gauges are hooked up. I think we're gonna do some alignment work on it. And then the plan is just to do our first drive on that car. <laughs> time. I think it's 14, 15 years I've owned that little Skyline. And then we have the Ken Mary Skyline as well. That car is here. It's on the paint side. We've gotten it back. We've completely disassembled it and we're going to do a pretty much a rotisserie build on that car. And then the reassembly takes place. You probably can look back at our old videos on the Ken Mary. You saw it over at Richard's place when it had the RB26 and the, the R32 front subframe assembly in it. That's going to be a really fun car. That's going to be our resto mod Skyline. The Hako was really built to the standard it was back in the day in 70. 172. This little Ken Mary is really kind of like what we do with these 6970 B body cars. This is another one we haven't really talked about. This is my personal H2. This is an 08, so it's got the newer dash. We installed a Duramax with an Allison Trans. It's running a uh, LMM motor since this is an 08. Uh, 08 Hummer. We pulled the 6.2 liter motor out of this and we installed it in the Trans Am. And if you remember seeing a yellow Hummer H2 SUT, that one is getting modified. Pretty much that's the donor truck for the drivetrain going into the yellow Hummer H2. You also have been brought up to speed on our, our rescue rig we're building. It's over at Dennis's shop and I got to get on the phone with him. We've just been so busy. I haven't had a chance to go over there and go over all the final details on that build, but that's another really bitchin' project. The plan is, is to make just a really special vehicle that we could continue to do our rescue support for all these dogs that are being euthanized in Southern California. A lot of projects. Trans Am's another one. Haven't really talked about that. Yeah, so this is the drivetrain we pulled out of that Hummer. We put a car intake from an LS2 and we used a, uh, a throttle body from an LS2, but I really love the pulley assembly that we installed on this. It really cleans up the engine base significantly. This is a 70 Firebird. This is not a real Trans Am. It was just a 70 Firebird that someone had put a Trans Am front clip on. So we're gonna utilize the front Trans Am clip. The idea is just to put a really beautiful paint job on this and sell it as a resto mod, like so many of the other cars we've built over the years. The 33 has been sitting up here on the, on the lift and it's just been covered up and it's filthy dirty. We got to pull it down, stretch its legs a little bit. And we're talking about doing a, a mild rebuild on that drivetrain. We're going to update the turbo, maybe do some cleanup work on that. That car is just unbelievable car. V-cam, HKS V-cam, all sorts of crazy stuff. It's got a stroker motor in it. It's just amazing car. That car is actually an RH9 club member car. I can't stress enough the importance and, and how excited I am about this Toretto Charger firing for the first time. So we got the Charger back from Richard over at B-Side Fabrication. He's got all of those rear panels. In the last video, we kind of showcased a little bit of the rear section, but on our social media, we've kind of showcased and showed off those rear panels completed. We've had to bring all of those panels back here to our shop. Richard meticulously removed every single piece. We put them in the spray booth and we put a satin clear over them to protect them from fingerprints. All of those have been completed 
completed. They really came out phenomenal. We still have to install the roll cage back in the car, install the seats. We're gonna install all the gauges. All of those gauges have been pre-wired and placed already. Now we just need to do the final assembly of those gauges onto the instrument clusters. And once all those panels go in, the interior is really gonna start cleaning up nicely. Right now, what we're doing with the charger is we've got the TTI headers. Since we have a behemoth of a motor under the hood, making room for all of that has not been an easy task. All the problems really came into fruition once we moved that drivetrain over to the driver's side. In doing so, they got a little bit closer to the torsion bars. As you can see here, Richard had made some modifications to these headers to make room for the torsion bars. I can show you that now. You can kind of get a feel for how much space we're working with here. With the headers in location, there's just not a lot of room. And since we had to actually move the entire drivetrain this way to have it to where that supercharger and that buzzard catcher sits dead center on that hood. This is the price you have to pay for these kind of mods. And if you look at the header, you could see that the torsion bar, when it comes back into its position right here, there just wasn't enough room for it. You know, we were at a crossroads. A, do we just build all custom headers or do we just use what we have? We ultimately decided to go with what we have because we just don't want to delay this project anymore. When we went with the gear vendor overdrive setup, it's a little tricky in using it. And we didn't go with the auto select gear vendor setup. This is a transmission that it bolts to the back of the 727 transmission. And we're gonna have to install safety lights because you have to be really careful. The last thing you wanna do is leave it in overdrive mode as you slow down and you put it in reverse. It will ruin this system. And we have to be mindful of that. So we're putting lights on the dash that remind the driver that, hey, you're still in overdrive, disengage the overdrive so we don't ruin the system. Little things like that tell me we're probably not gonna use the overdrive that much. And quite frankly, I can't imagine cruising down the freeway at speeds of 70 miles an hour in this thing anyway. And then also, as you guys can see that it's got the monster donut tires on the back of it right now, we have purchased the correct size tire that was actually seen in the movie and uh, that'll lower the back end a little bit more. Uh, we are gonna lower the front end, but the last thing we wanna do is have it riding like this down the road. So once the smaller tires are installed. We are gonna tweak the torsion bars a little bit, lighten, take some load off of there. We've got it raised up extremely high. I know a lot of comments in previous videos have mentioned that. Why is it sitting so high? Well, we have the torsion bars torqued up as high as we can just to make more room for us to work under the car. It will be coming down to look just like it did in the movie. Hopefully the new tires will give it that appearance as well. We did also decide on where we're gonna dump the exhaust and it's just gonna be prior to the rear diff. We're not going all the way back past the diff. The other thing we had to do, Fortunately, Low Car makes a variety of different oil dipsticks. Yeah, this was the first one we ordered. They make really nice stuff. Also, the other thing that we had to do is we had to modify the bottom of this radiator. This actually came out straight, like the top portion. We had to move it upward and upward angle to make clearances. It's getting close. Every time I think we're a little bit closer, there's something else that sets its back a little bit. Right now, we're also waiting for the pulley to come in. We had to custom order a supercharger belt. Hopefully, we'll be coming in soon so we could button up the engine completely and do our first fire. So also we're working on the Supra. The last time we took it out, we were having a lot of fun and we kind of noticed there was a vibration coming from the rear differential. It was the one thing that we did not have rebuilt. So we're gonna pull the diff just out of safety, have it rebuilt. That way we could feel more confident when we drive it up to LA and, and start using it a little bit more. The car makes so much power. The last thing we wanna do is have a catastrophic failure happen. There's still a few more things we need to button up on the Supra. I have to install the decals on the wing. I have to replace the rear decal cows on the rear spats. We have those uh, for modern image. We just haven't had time to put them on. Our goal is, is to get the diff back, reinstall it, make sure that's where the majority of the noise was coming from. If it's still making that noise, then we're pulling the training. We're going to send the training out. This car makes way too much power to have some sort of catastrophic failure due to a differential or, or transmission. Our plan is really to start enjoying it and take it to more car events. For me, this is who I am. I love old B bodies. I love Mopars. You know, this is a car that I may very well keep. It'll depends on if I can bring it home. Part of me thought about, how am I gonna pull it out of the garage? I've got some elderly neighbors and the last thing I wanna do is have the cops called on me. So we'll have to figure that out. Bear in mind, this is all going on while we're moving. We have multiple 
things going on. In the next week or so, these four post lifts are gonna be moved out of here to the new location. We're acquiring a couple new four post lifts as well, and we're gonna start making this transition over to the new shop. We're gonna probably use this facility for a couple more months to button up our big projects. And then the plan is, is hopefully in three, four months, we're gonna be completely moved over to the new facility and working out of that facility doing all of our builds there. So all of our future videos hopefully will be seen in the new building. If you guys haven't commented before, please give us a comment. We'd love to hear what you guys have to say. And if you're not a subscriber, please hit the subscribe button. We appreciate all the support. Don't forget, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. We'll see you on the next one.